it's February and it's snowing outside. And the last thing that's probably on your mind is your garden. But should it be the first thing? Today I'm going to talk to you about starting your onion seeds indoors and so you can have a plentiful harvest come middle of summer. But I'm also going to tell you about one big mistake that I made that I don't want you to make. So stick around, let's talk about it. Welcome to Blended Hearts Homestead. My name is Shannon, and today I'm gonna to show you how I get my onion seeds started indoors. Now I live in upstate New York. My zone is 5B, and my last estimated frost date is right around May 12th through May 17th. So I like to get my onion seeds started as early as possible. And it's February, it's time to get them going. I'm planning on transplanting them outside, probably mid to late April. Onion seeds are frost hardy, so the cooler weather will not hurt them. It actually helps them grow. But getting them started indoors rather than direct sowing the seeds outside helps to give you a much bigger onion when it's fully mature. Plants that can survive in below freezing temperatures are called either frost hardy, like I just mentioned, or half hardy. Half hardy or semi hardy plants can tolerate a mild freeze, but begin to struggle when the temperature goes below 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Hardy varieties can survive a much colder temperatures, but both of them can handle it pretty well, especially if you provide them with a mild source of protection, like a cold frame or otherwise type of tarp or whatnot. This way, they're not directly exposed to the wind and precipitation. Now on the flip side, these varieties usually don't do very well in warmer climates, especially when the temperature starts to reach right around 85 degrees consistently. Because when the weather does become steadily warmer, this triggers the plant to mature into the later stages of their life cycle where they'll produce flowers and seeds. If you live in a cooler area, you may be able to successfully grow these throughout the summer. But if you live in a warmer area, you might wanna start them in the fall or early spring. As I mentioned in a previous video about seed details, which you can check out right here, there are many different types and varieties of seeds that you can purchase. Within the onion family itself, there are three main types that you have to be aware of. They're called long day, intermediate, and short day type onions. And this is where I made my mistake. The first variety of onion seeds that I bought this year were red burgundy onions from MI Gardener. Sounded delicious, reviews were great. Only thing I didn't pay attention to until I got the packet was that these are short day variety type seeds. Well, what exactly does that mean? Why can't I still grow them? I can, however, onions are often defined by the hours of daylight required for them to grow. This is where the short day, intermediate, and long day terms come into play. Short day onions begin to develop bulbs when the day length increases to about 10 to 12 hours of sunlight. These onions are best grown in the south and are generally sweeter. Their high sugar and water content make them perfect for baking and cooking, but not necessarily for long-term storage. Long day onions typically require 14 to 16 hours of sunlight and are best grown in the northern states. With a low sugar and high sulfur content, they're best used for immediate cooking or long-term storage. Now looking at this map here that I'm showing you, you can see where the line is pretty well drawn. Gardeners north of the line should plant long day, while gardeners south of the line should plant short day in the winter for a spring or summer harvest, while intermediate works well for north and south. So why does this matter? Growing the wrong day length onion in the incorrect area will result in an onion that doesn't produce to its full potential. So purchasing the proper day length seed for an onion is your first step in success. So while I can probably still sow these in the fall and let them grow over winter for a spring harvest, it's not gonna do me any good right now. So back to the research drawing board I went to find the perfect seeds for my area. And I found them with Baker's Creek. They are called Globo Onions and they are long day type. So they're perfect for my area. Um, these are actually, they do have a super sweet complex flavor and they grow to gigantic bulbs, which I'm excited for. And they're actually perfect for long-term storage as well. So I'm hopeful that these are gonna develop into what I need for my garden. So now let's get these things planted. In another video I did about the supplies you need for growing your seeds indoors, which you can check that one out right here, I talked about the different types of soil medium that I would use for growing my seeds. So I've prepared that soil right here. 
I have pre-moistened it with boiling water in order to get any bacteria or fungal diseases that possibly could have been in the bag because this did come from a big box store out. Now, again, I've moistened it, but it's not dripping. It is just enough to hold the shape of the soil, okay? But no water's coming out. Some soil's flaking out, that's okay, but just enough to hold the shape. Now, one of the things about big box store potting soil mixes is it tends to have sticks and other large type objects in it that you want to make sure you pick out before planting your seeds into it, especially with onions, because onions require good drainage for your soil mix. What we're going to do, we're going to take this soil, plant it in here. Now, onions are not particular about the space that they require. They actually don't mind being sown on top of each other, basically. We're surviving together in small cells. Because once the seedlings start to sprout, you can gently pull them apart and transplant them into different pots. Now I'm going to pour some water into my tray in order to get my soil moistened from the bottom up even further. I'm gonna let that soak for about 20 to 30 minutes any water that is still in there after 30 minutes, I'm going to pour out. Being that the soil has already been pre-moistened, it'll soak up a little bit more, probably not a ton, but enough to where the onion seeds need it. Now we're going to take our seeds and plant them. Now, the onion seeds are pretty small. They're not the smallest seed in the uh, garden variety, but and these ones are dark in color. You can see them. And what you do is you just take a couple in each cell and put them on top of the soil. These seeds should germinate in about seven to 14 days. Implanting more in one cell means you have a better success rate for germination, hopefully. Okay, so that tray is full. So I have some seeds left over. I'm gonna gently pat these down. And then I'm going to lightly cover them with a little bit of soil. Once you've got your onion seeds planted, the next thing you want to do is make your label. Especially if you're growing a lot of different varieties of plants, you want to make sure that each container that you're growing them in is labeled somehow so you don't forget. So I was gifted this little pack of plastic labels last year from my mother. Thank you, mamas. So I am going to write on one of these what these are. Gonna 
set that right in there. Once I have my label done, then I'm going to take my humidity dome and put that over the onion seeds. This will help to hasten the germination of the seeds. You should expect to see seeds sprouting within 7 to 14 days. Most of the time, if your house is set at a 65 degree or warmer temperature, you won't need a heat mat for onion seeds. However, we've got this set up out here on our sunroom that's not heated all the time. So I am using a heat mat for mine. And I'm also going to turn on my grow lights. One of the things that my brilliant partner Jason made for me are these extremely handy rise and lower levels for my grow lights. So in order to get them lowered, all I have to do is untwist these little handles. And lower my grow lights down to about one inch above my dome. And I'll do the same for the ones in the back. Once the seedlings do sprout, you want to take off that humidity dome. It's no longer needed. And then you'll lower the grow light even further to where they're about two inches off of the seedling. As the seedling grows, you'll increase the height of the grow light. I will leave these grow lights on for 12 hours and then shut them off for 12 hours. And that will be the cycle that we do every day. Once the seedlings get about an inch tall, I will either put a small fan out here to blow a gentle breeze on them, or I will run my hand over them at least five or six times a day. That helps to strengthen the seedlings and the roots developing within them. The fan would also help to prevent mold and fungus from getting into the root system of the onion. From this point onward, you're going to check your soil daily to see if the moisture content is still good. You don't want to let your onion seeds get too dry. So when they need water, you're going to take the cells out of the flat, fill the flat up about halfway with water, put the cells back into it, allow the cells to soak up the water into the soil for 30 minutes. And whatever water is left over after 30 minutes, just dump it out. So we'll keep an eye on these babies for the next few days. I'll show you some progress as we go along and the next steps to taking care of your onions once they do sprout. If you have any tips or tricks that you use when planting onion seeds indoors, please leave a comment below and let me know what you have. I love learning new things. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up sign below, subscribe and share, and have a wonderful day. God bless you. Music